Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Andy at Lawrenceville Garage. Today we're doing something completely different. I'm helping a friend out with his car, and uh, it's quite a bit different from the LS swaps we've been doing in the past. Uh, let me show you what I'm working with. This is what we're working with today. It's a 1940 Ford, uh, completely restored car. Uh, it was probably done 15, 20 years ago maybe. The owner, a friend of mine, uh, wants to convert the original ignition over to electronic because the distributor has a dual point distributor in it. And let me show you what that looks like. It's a little different than anything else you would see, certainly not an LS. This is what it looks like. And let's see, it mounts on the front of the engine like this. This part can come off. Anyway, you have, it's a V8, so you have four plug wires that go into each side here. This comes off, pops off. You have four plug wires that come in here. And if you can see down in there, I'm not sure how easy it is with the lighting in here, are dual points. And it's interesting how it works. It's really pretty simple. It mounts to the front of the motor and is keyed like that. Well, in putting an electronic ignition on this car, uh, there's a couple of key things that, if you haven't done this before, would be some helpful little tips. On this flathead engine, along with others of the era, they may have these metal tubes, and these are what your spark plug wires come through. And as you can see over here on the side, they come out for the, uh, on this side, is uh, the five, six, five, six, seven, and eight plug. And I still have to uh, cut these and so that they'll fit the plugs just right. But getting them, getting those spark plug wires through that tube is a bit of a challenge. And the way to do it, to make it easier, is to use a little bit of liquid wrench or WD-40 on the spark plug wire as you push it through. There's a little slot in the middle you see right there where the where the wire comes out. So advance your wire, just uh, check your distributor cap and it'll tell you which one goes uh, to which plug, which wire. And then as it reaches there, I just pull it out with a pair of needle nose pliers. Now the last wire that comes out the very end over here is the hardest one to get through. And what I did there was I used just a piece of wire here can't see it very well. It's a small thin gauge wire. I fished it through there and cut a little hole in the very end of the spark plug wire with a small Phillips screwdriver. Just punched a little hole through the end and see if I can see it here. Actually, the end may have come off. Uh, this one already did. Uh, and I fished that wire through it and bent it around and then just pulled it through. And if you put some lubrication on the outside of the spark plug wires, they will slide through easily. If you don't, it is a challenge and you will wrestle with it. Okay, with that being done, this is the Pertronics ignition unit or the distributor, uh, has, does away with the points and uh, it's keyed as well. So really whatever, wherever the engine stopped, as long as the engine hasn't been turned over once the distributor was removed, you just uh, rotate the rotor here until the key on the back side lines up with the slot that is uh, inside the motor. Let's see if I can get down in there. It's kind of hard to see. I will try to lower it though so you can. And the wires are in the way. Yeah, it's too dark to see, but there's a keyway in there and it'll fit. Uh, the problem we're having now, that's a slight problem, but one you'd want to be aware of is that when you're putting the three bolts in that hold the distributor in place, you know, it's, uh, there's two, two on the left, uh, upper and lower, and then one on the right. Well, this one that's on the right is directly in the, uh, directly behind this clip that holds the distributor cap on. No big deal. But if you get the appropriate distributor bolts, and I, this is a kit I got from Speedway Automotive, that it will not go into this hole correctly because of this clip. 
it's a little out. Uh, little, it's a little too far out and won't aligned so that the screw can go in there, all right, or the bolt, I should say. Uh, and my mistake was initially lining it up and putting these two bolts in, and then you find out, guess what? This one won't go. And the way to get around that is that clip on the bottom side, it's got a couple little uh, tangs. So what I'm going to do is uh, squeeze those together and pull the tang, uh, pull that clip out to open that spot up so I can put the bolt in. Uh, I can't really, don't have a way to hold the camera and do that, so I'm going to put it down for just a moment, and then I'll come back and show you what I did. Okay, here I took the, the little pin out and the clip, and the screw goes directly in, and you can see, you know, if you look at it straight on, that it makes a little interference there, but with that out of the way, it goes straight in place. So I would suggest putting this bolt in place first uh, and starting it, or at least put it in place so that when you start the other two, uh, this one's already in alignment and it should go in easy enough. Okay, I'm just showing now, I put the, the distributor clip back in place so that it's out of the way, and you can see why that would not work. It just comes in contact with it. But we put the little tab back in there and bend it out. Uh, it goes in just fine, but nowhere in the instructions does it tell you to do something like that. So if you do that ahead of time, you'll save yourself a little grief. Now I'm gonna install it. This is looking at the two distributors. This is the original 40, and this is the electronic unit. I referred to it earlier as a Pertronics, and actually it has some Pertronics components within it, but it's produced by Stromberg, and it's called a Stromberg E-Fire. You can see on the back, this is the keyway that makes contact with the camshaft to spin it. And it's slightly different on the electronic, but basically does the same thing. Now on our original, we had this keyway, or this uh, adapter, that fit, that is slotted, you can see, and it's, uh, this part goes into the cam, the other part it's right here on top of the distributor to uh, add as a spacer. Well, what we found was that in this car's history, uh, it's probably it's definitely been rebuilt and that the camshaft has probably been replaced with a later model cam. And the reason being, the original Ford, 40 Ford, did not need this adapter. The cam this would directly plug into, or, or keyway, would fit into the front of the cam on the 44. The later model cams were a little bit shorter, and that's why you needed this adapter. Now this one was uh, uh, indexed, or at least I say indexed. It was it had it was pinned, so that it wouldn't fall off. Okay, on the new distributor, obviously when we started to put it in, we could see hey, there's a difference. It's way too short. We ordered a new uh, adapter. This was from Speedway Motors, very nice little piece, billet, and it fits nicely on the end of the distributor. And what I like about it is, if you compare the two, you can see the size difference. There's quite a bit of difference, and I like this larger size. Trying to fit this older adapter, and there's no telling how old this thing is, onto the uh, little keyway here of the of the new distributor and getting it in place is going to be a bit of a challenge. It's very loose. Whereas the larger one fits, it's, it's still a little loose but not bad, but it's much larger and it's going to fit the front of the cam much better. So I like that idea. But we had to wait a few days to get that component uh, because we discovered once we put the distributor in place, hey, there's a problem. It spins, it's not touching the cam. Well, here was why. And this total thickness is about a, a half an inch. So now we're going to put the new adapter onto the distributor and see if we can't get it mounted up. Okay, in mounting this up, I'm going to have to put the camera down. I don't have my stand with me, and this is a three-handed job, and I've only got two, obviously, so I'm already coming up short. So let me come back to you in just a minute once we get it in place, and I can tell you if there was any difficulties in getting it installed. All right, as a tip. You look down here and you can see, rather than trying to put the adapter on the distributor and instead insert it, go ahead and put the adapter to the front of the camshaft. That was simple enough. 
it's not going to fall if it slips out of your finger it's not going to fall down any further because uh, of its thickness it's it's perfectly fine and you can see now that the front your better angle is almost flush with the uh, the base of the timing cover so now we can put the distributor in much easier put the adapter on first I was trying to put it on the distributor and that was not going to fly doing it this way will be much better okay the unit is installed actually it was much easier than I expected once that uh, little adapter is in place on the cam sliding this in works very well uh, I mentioned before about putting this bolt in first because of the the clip on the side and that is definitely a positive there because when it comes to tightening it you know you get your allen in there and if you can see in there there is no way if that clip was in place that that you would be able to get your, uh, your bolt in there this particular set the the bolts that hold it in are, are an allen style not a uh, standard bolt head okay now we're going to put the uh, crab shell uh, designed cap on and again I'm going to need a couple of hands so I'll be back in a moment all right, the unit is installed. I would suggest not completing your spark plug wires here until you've got the distributor in place because once the unit is in place based on its proximity to these tubes and the, the wires that go into them, that uh, you may find that if you do these first, like I did, that you might have to redo one because if the, the wires are too close or or kinked or whatever, uh, you may have to pull them through further, and in which case that would lengthen uh, the individual wire to the plug, and if you've already done it, then you may have to redo it. I've got uh, one I'm gonna have to redo. Anyway, it's uh, it's in place, uh, fits very nicely. You're gonna route your wires in such a way that they do not make contact with the fan and you have plenty of clearance there. Uh, we got the coil mounted on the fender well and the coil wire in place. And uh, now we're going to also take the two wires that come off the distributor and lengthen them so that they can reach the coil. You can also see in this uh, area, I added an additional ground strap. Uh, when, you, when you're running this hot, hotter spark ignition, it's recommended that you have an additional ground strap. And while we've got one in the back there, uh, I added an additional nice one up here just to make sure that everything should work properly. The unit's installed and wired to the coil. And I made a statement earlier that I wanted to make sure uh, I didn't mislead anybody. I just made the assumption that the black and white wire coming out of the distributor went directly to the coil. And that is not the case on a six volt system. <coughs> the black wire uh, according to the instructions, does go to the negative side of the coil. The positive wire, or I should say the white wire, uh, should go to the ignition wire that was originally coming from the key switch to the original coil. Now the original coil had this wire here and it was only so long, so I added a red wire to it just so it would eliminate some confusion with two, co two wires of the same color. So the red wire I have to the original coil wire coming off the uh, harness here and the white wire I had a lengthened piece on it and I simply um, have them out here where I can get to them. I've got a twisted connection. I definitely am not going to leave it that way, but it makes it a lot easier to work on something when you can stand up instead of leaning over in here or cutting a wire that's too short and uh, realizing that later. So for now, and then uh, also on the uh, coil, the positive side has the ground. So this runs uh, down to the frame. So I tapped a hole down there and that's on the positive side of the coil. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching the video today. Hope you learned something from it, something a little different, I know I did. Also everything that we used in the conversion, all the parts uh, will be listed below in the description along with part numbers where I got them and approximate price in case this is something you might want to do in the future. So all that information is down below. At the end of the video, if you keep watching, will be pictures of each of those items again so that you can kind of more easily identify uh, those parts. 
and this is for a six volt 1944. So thanks for watching today. Appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe. Got a lot more things coming forward. Stay tuned.